Nick Wojcik, thank you so much for taking a few minutes. How are you doing? Good, really good. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Like, so I, I have to ask you, you're in the midst of culture as an evangelist, as a speaker, a motivational speaker. What are you seeing on the ground as you're sharing your faith and sharing sharing your testimony with people? Because I think we're in the midst of, of really a cultural revolution of people interested in finding hope. Uh, what are you hearing from people as you speak? I think we need to... Uh understand that the redefinition of you know the cultural filter of what it means to love people and still though tell them the truth of what righteousness and, and unrighteousness is uh, I think we uh, we're seeing a separation between the wheat and the chaff uh, the sheep and the goats um, and uh, 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 even more defined line of people who add or subtract of the gospel and people who do not yeah. And uh, for the people who do not uh, unwaveringly in their faith and uh, biblical stance, uh, we see the blessing of God upon them. And, uh, you know, I've been really inspired coming here and I spoke at the Israel 365 event last night as well. And I really believe that uh, Christians are either lazy or delusional mm. uh, in many aspects when it comes to really supporting Israel and really understanding yeah. that we actually could be witnessing right now our right hand of America losing its knowledge of its skill because we have absolutely neglected Israel, yeah. absolutely neglected them in the last 30 months. And so we need uh, more people to support Israeli nonprofit organizations. They need our prayers. We need to fast for them. So it's a very interesting time that we all live in. You know, I think that that really speaks to to this next question, which is there are so many hot button issues, whether it's abortion, Israel, uh, LGBT stuff. I mean, there you run run the gamut of things yeah. that I think culture is dealing with that the church needs to be speaking to, but right. we don't always do it effectively. Can you if speak to that? If we do it at all. <laughs> yeah. Look, um, if you go to lifewithoutlimbs.org and you look at the Champions for the Brokenhearted video series, we talk about addictions, we talk about pornography, we talk about sexual abuse. You know that one out of three uh, girls in America have been sexually abused by age 17? Did you know that one out of five boys in America have been sexually abused uh, by age 17? Did you know that one third of the 66 million abortions that happened in America were done by women who actually went to evangelical Protestant churches once a month for 12 months at least in a row? These are the statistics where we actually need to start talking about the things that we need to start talking about. And so, for instance, when we talk about unborn, go to standforlife.com to actually go and get some curriculum and programming and activities to help you and your leadership and your young people, especially, to start talking about what this actually means. Because you can't be Christian without understanding the image of God. And when you actually understand the image of God, a lot of this identity crisis and the unborn and many other aspects of that, if we can come back to that, that simple truth and the root of roots is you were made in the image of God and God made male and female. You got a penis, you're a male, period. And so what we got to understand is how God has made us, who we are. He loves us. He's got a plan for us. Let's go back to the basics of such. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to warn the church right here, right now. Pastors who didn't have either the education or the courage to talk about Roe v. Wade when Roe v. Wade was overturned, in 24 months, I'm looking you in your eye and there's going to be a massive crisis, a huge mm -hmm. crisis. There's going to be women coming up to the pastors and leaders of the churches and they're going to say, my 14-year-old, she didn't tell me she was pregnant. I came home. She nearly died in the restroom because she gave her, herself her self-induced pills to abort the child that was in her womb. She nearly died. Pastor, can you help me? What do I tell her? What do I say? We don't even know what to do with that. Yeah. We are 10 steps behind yeah. in actually being a relevant church who actually has taught anybody how to evangelize and preach the gospel. No one's ever sat down with you and said, hey, have you ever been sexually abused? And actually talked about your broken heart being healed before they just continue on and put you in a cell group that you can actually hide any secret from. Yeah. It's more than just coming to church. It's more than just serving in the church. It's more about more than volunteering. It's about people being saved, saints being healed, and then commissioned in part of the Great Commission. If we're not relevant to someone who's being abused, then who's Who your Jesus? Who are you Jesus? relevant to? Period. Yeah. Who's your Jesus? It's yeah. done. 
Yeah. So uh, we live in a culture that's so people are so desperate for identity, and I think you're speaking to that, right? It's they want a sense selfish. of belonging. It's centered right. on pride. It's about how I feel what, about what you think about me, what you think about me, what you judge me, or, or what you don't judge me. Do you accept me? And it's about it. It's it's kind of like a social media in a human mm -hmm. form. How many people do I actually get along with who actually like me? And if they yeah. don't like me for who I am, ba 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 ba, or I don't like me for who I am, I'm going to change tomorrow. Hmm. And then let's see what and my new identity. It's like resetting. Yeah. Right. When you got a problem in a marriage, I'm sorry, but if you got a problem in a marriage, you have an option to divorce or you don't. And a part of us psychologically, I'm not blaming anyone who's divorced, but I'm just going to say it that way. It's like as divorce is to a broken marriage to start afresh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Same thing for people who don't like themselves, who's drowned in depression, anxiety, fear, confusion, most likely PTSD from stuff that's happened in their life the last 10 years, then now gives them their own ability to reset. Yeah. Sorry. But that's what that was all about. It's about what the people think about me. I'm sorry I interrupted you, but that's exactly no. what we're dealing with here in Gen Z. Mm. I'm going to feel good today depending on what you think of me and if you don't like me that's cool I got some friends that love me the way that they that the way I am they love me they love you if they really loved you and LGBTQ is a sin they would lovingly tell you still that in the Bible you cannot rip that page of the Bible and the pages of the Bible that actually say you cannot be comfortable in that sin you must walk away from sin transgender stuff being fed in our school systems oh we're just christians and look at the times of the world oh jesus is coming back jesus is coming back jesus is coming back if we actually spent some time in our church to figure out who of the church can go and sit on the school boards and flip the school boards yeah flip them and flip them over in jesus name and say you know what devil you don't have dominion in our school you don't have dominion in our community because our church is the light and beacon of light you can't just expect people to come into church if you haven't been taught how to reach them for jesus outside of your church walls your church has failed you mm, yeah oh well, my last question for you and i know you've been generous with your time so i appreciate no, it this is you guys are huge but and I, lovely oh well, thank you thank you Trey. thank you no i want to ask you as someone who's been through so much in your own life right you've faced adversity you've faced obstacles in life and you've still chosen to see those different uh pain points or moments of suffering uh, as opportunities for God to, to, to really transform you and change your life. But we live in a culture that's wanting to numb all of that, right? We want to numb the pain. We don't want to feel any adversity. Coping what, mechanisms. Yes. What's your message for, for people who are looking for coping mechanisms when they should really be leaning into God? And to heal. Yes. Period. Yeah. Uh, tell someone, get counseling, talk to someone. Uh, that's why I love what Life Without Limbs Ministry is actually doing. Listen, we're training people in pews that have a heart for the abused or foster care or veterans or poorer people in our community to actually hold small groups in the church that's thematically based. Hmm. I've written out 106 different ways on how the human being can suffer. And the way that you can actually have a small group in the church that's thematically based. We want Bible studies of men who can actually confess. I'm addicted to pornography. Yeah. Oh, we can say, oh, human trafficking, human trafficking. Good. Put a no pornography sticker on your car and let's talk about your pornographic addiction. When was the first time you actually saw pornography? What happened? Who showed it? What happened? What has that done now to your... It, it's scientifically proven that when you're porno pornographically addicted, it rewires your brain, just like social media rewires your brain. Yeah. We are getting rewired. We are supposed to be renewed in our mind. And so what happens is, is we get comfortable and we get lazy and we just look for coping mechanisms. You just feel okay. Just because you feel okay this week doesn't mean anything. You need to go back to the sin. You need to confess the sin. You need to reveal, restore, and uh, uh, sorry, you need to re reveal, repent, Mm. and restore and part of the repentance is something called accountability yeah something called accountability period yeah i'm not uh, i'm not addicted to any pornography i'm not addicted to drugs i'm not addicted i'm not also 
sacrificing my family for ministry. I've seen too many people mm. not finish strong. Why? Because I have accountability. Yeah. I make sure that my family comes first. I make sure that we do all that we can to hunger and thirst for righteousness. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. We need to ask God to give us that fire again. Yeah. And accountability. It ain't rocket science. Yeah. We're family. I think the bottom line, Trey, is we need to re-engage the family of God as a family, not a social club that gathers once a week. Yeah. We need to get real. And there's healing and there's power. And if you're addicted and you're going through something and there's something that the Holy Spirit needs to now Conf you need to confess that sin. The Holy Spirit's now convicted you. Confess that sin. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Change me. Give me courage to talk to somebody. I can't do this on my own. Devil, get behind me in Jesus' name. I am the Lord's. Help me to walk away from sin and help me, God, to push into you. Abide in you so that you abide in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's so much power in our words. And I think as Christians, we don't recognize the power we have in our words and in the community of believers. Yeah. Uh, talking about that accountability factor is so important if we want to speak to these issues that are going on in our culture. But we could talk forever. So, Nick, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I love you. And may the church bless God mm -hmm. so that we may even dare to say once again, God bless America. America, Trey, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't deserve another single blessing from the Lord. Period. Period. We've walked away from Him. We've walked away from Him. Yeah. And this is the time that we need to repent and come back. I'm not praying for revival, Trey. I'm sick and tired of people saying I'm praying for revival. I'm sick and tired of it. You know, we're praying for repentance. Yeah. People don't even know what revival looks like. They don't even know what that is. Is that evil people doing righteous things? We're delusional. Yeah. We need yeah. to repent and we need to repent now. This is the last of the last window for our country. Yeah, absolutely. Repentance comes first, I think. Yeah. Amen. So, anyway, thank Love you. you. Thank you, Trey. God bless you. It.